As an artist, as someone who makes it his business to constantly notice things and constantly make things and make things up, I'd like to make the case for indolence. Now, I'm not talking about full-on laziness, but rather a kind of creative inactivity where one puts aside the world of practical outcomes in favor of something slower, something more meaningful, maybe even something more poetic. You know, my father, a man of, 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 of supreme probity, used to love invoking the Italian proverb, dolce far niente, it's sweet doing nothing. <laughs> but I don't have to tell you that these days, we, we live in a time where we're, we've, made, we've made personal productivity a national obsession, almost a fetish. We boast about the long hours we spend at work, and we use social media as our own private public relations firm in order to commodify our personal lives into an infomercial. And in order to make this personal productivity more efficient, we've created a culture of spectacular innovation. And, and one of the chief objectives of that innovation is, is, to, is, is to minimize the, the possible friction that could, in fact, slow us down. We have turned convenience into an ethic. And, and honestly, who would not want to, on their way to work, be able to buy a frothy, piping, hot, sweet, delicious, caffeinated beverage with a bagel and a schmear, accruing loyalty points, all by waving one's phone and never leaving one's car. Well, well, me, and, 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 and it's here I'd like to advocate against convenience by proposing a few aesthetically rewarding, perhaps regressive, but perhaps eudaimonic nonetheless, practices that uh, will um, offer an alternative. For example, why not why not write a letter, write a letter with a pen, write a letter with a pen and walk it over to the post office and while at the post office eavesdrop on your fellow customers and turn those snippets and non sequiturs into your own private unpublished one act play or how about making pesto, making pesto on a wooden cutting board using an exquisitely designed menacingly sharp stainless steel Japanese sushi blade. Now that should keep you focused. Or, or how about using a dictionary? Using a dictionary so that the next time you want to remind yourself that a dactyl consists of one long syllable followed by two short ones, you may serendipitously learn that to doggle is to soil one's clothes in a bog.